Okay, I thought I would play with this set a little bit. This is um the custom tee. And the great thing about the custom tee is you can make all sorts of stuff with it. This is just a really versatile set. It's good for Father's Day. It's good for all sorts of stuff, not just Father's Day. All sorts of holidays coming up we could use this for. But I thought I would try to incorporate this watercolor technique I just did and you know, it's kind of like a version on a tie-dyed um, t-shirt, not quite a tie-dyed t-shirt, but it's kind of tie-dyed. And I just um, went ahead and stamped this image on my tie-dye, and I pulled out some of my card layers that I had already cut and to see what I could use that would sort of match or kind of pick up the colors. I think I'm going to go grab a Melon Mambo, but for now I have that, plus I have this... I think this is tangerine or I better look and see what it is but anyway there's a couple I can use I need a melon mambo I think maybe one of these um, Bermuda Bays or Island Indigo but I'll be right back I'll grab those okay I'm gonna use the big shot here so I'm gonna just bring in my big shot wow that's really close isn't it here let me move this a little bit still kind of in your face let's see does that help well oh. Not really. Okay, well, hopefully I can't back it up too much more. So let me just do this and I'll get it out of your way. Um, but let's see which one I'm going to choose. I think we went ahead and used the plain t-shirt. So that's this one. And um, what I usually do is I, um, this one isn't completed because I just got a few more thinlets and framelets, but what I usually do is I buy these uh, little plastic um, cases from Stampin' Up. You get a set of four, I think, for $6. It's really inexpensive. Then I get these pieces of magnetic sheets. These you can get anywhere. A lot of people get them from Home Depot. They say they're vent covers. I don't get them there. What I do is I get them from a, sort of a Dollar Tree place. It's not a Dollar Tree, but it's, it's actually a $1.50 store. It's called Daiso, D-A-I-S-O. Local to my area, I'm in Southern California, and they're pretty much everywhere here, but um, everything there is $1.50 unless otherwise marked. So I buy a sheet of this, pay, um, it's just a magnetic sheet, and um, the size I get, I can get two of them out of this. So for 75 cents, I make this. It just makes a nice little storage thing for my thin lids and that way I don't lose them because you know I will lose them all right so I am going to cut out one of these let's see which one and you just want to make sure that the part with the little raised lip is turned face down when you're using this big shot that way you don't um, make a mistake and it'll cut if it's not face down it won't cut so I am gonna go with this one because it's so bright now I do have a magnetic um, platform, just not using it here. It works really great because it holds the, uh, plate, the thinlet in, in place very easily and it won't move. But if you find that you're having trouble, what you can do is use a little piece of your washi tape because it won't stick to anything really and it won't um, make any paper tear. But I think if you're careful, it's not a big deal and um, you know you just have to make sure you hold it down and put it under here so that nothing moves around too much and you'll be just fine. Now I know you're looking at this, it's all scarred up. It's no big deal. You do scar these up. I, I do go through these cutting plates. They're $11 for a pair and they will get kind of scarred up because that's what they're meant to do. But um, they work fine, they just don't look so fine <laughs> after a while and it's not a big deal. But I still change them out regularly and I've had these ones for about a month and a half or so. But I'd say for me about every month or two I'll change them just because I get tired of looking at them. They, they still function just fine. Anyway, I just go ahead and roll it through and this Big Shot is so awesome. It is such a workhorse. You can do tons of die cutting and the thing will work and work and work. It's, it's amazing and you always get really good cuts. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. Oh wow, I don't even have to try to punch it out. Wow, that looks so cute, I love it. Okay, so that's the watercolor paper and that's kind of thicker than other paper. But while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out too just cause um, I, oops. <laughs> I might wanna do another color. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out as well, this little 
Daffodil Delight one. So let's get that kind of lined up. I think that's it, is it? Yeah, I'm kind of at a funny angle here so I can't see. You guys can probably see better than me. Okay, is that right? Yeah, I think it's right. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep my finger on it and hold it there while I get it started. And then once it gets to about this point, I'll change over. All right, and that's all there is to it. This is so neat. Okay, oh, look at that. See, now I have two completely different ones. Oh, I really like these. These are, these are cute. All right, so let me just move this. Um, I'll cut the rest later. Normally, I would just go ahead and cut them now, but because you're here, I'm going to wait. Let me do it later. Okay, so let's pull out these and see which ones look good with these colors. I think we can take this away for now. I think, do you think this looks better with the tangerine or with this yellow? I think maybe the yellow and I'll get a different piece to have as the base. Let's see, do I have anything here? I don't know, would this look good as a base? Let's see. No, that would not look good as a base. So we'll get something else as a base. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper for the next layer. All right, so I found some colors. <clears throat> Took me a little bit, but found a couple cute colors and I think this is what we're gonna go with. I think for this one, I think the Melon Mambo looks really good. And I think this one is gonna have to go with this color and I found this for the background. So I'm gonna do this one in a minute. But first, I want to cut this one down to a background size for this so that I can have some contrast there. I'm gonna go ahead and make a background um, layer because I couldn't really find one. I was looking and looking and it, I just couldn't do it. So I'm gonna cut this. Um, this card is five and a half times, and it's four and a quarter across the bottom. So I'm gonna make this layer three and three quarters by five, if this is five inches. Maybe it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I do this sometimes because I want to have a background that's really cute, but I don't have the background paper. So what I usually do is I will find a color, in this case it's gonna be Bermuda Bay, because I wanna kinda pick up that color. So, I'm gonna see if this will work. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll try. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this cute little butterfly set and do a random sort of pattern. Oops, see, I just made a mistake, oh my gosh. Well, let's see, if it's too bad, I'll try to cover it here. Yay, I covered it. <laughs> if it's too bad, I can flip it over. That's what I like about these. Paper always has two sides, see? Other side's clean. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm just gonna go over and do it like this. And I won't forget about the rest of the paper. It's just so that I can get a little color on here and I'm just trying to pick up this color and I'm hoping it works. We'll see. If it doesn't, I don't have to do it. You know, this little butterfly is part of this set called Papillon Potpourri. It's this set right here. It's got lots of little butterflies. It's really cute. Um, I've used it for other stuff. It's, it's adorable. But I'm trying to think, I wonder if I should um, give this little butterfly his antenna, or her antenna. Because she doesn't have any antennas on her right now. Should I give this one one more little? Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here. I don't know if it needs antennas or not. That might, that might look weird. Let's just see. Uh, 
Oh, that's the blue. I don't want the blue. Okay, I'll use the black. Still has blue on it. All right, I don't know if I want to even try to give it an antenna, but we'll see. So that's what's good about these stamps is they're clear. The acrylic blocks are good. And so when you add them to your clear mounted stamps like this, they really make a great combination. So these are the clear mounts. They're the, the red rubber ones are called clear mounts. I know it's kind of counterintuitive because they're not clear, they're red. And then the ones that are clear are called photopolymer. So those are the two different kinds of stamps that we have. And I'm going to pull this closer because I can't see it. Okay, that, that doesn't look bad. I don't know if I should do all of them. What do you think? Think it looks good or not? I think if I could get it a little closer, it'd look better. But I'm having a hard time with that. So I'm going to do a couple more of these and then I will assemble it. Kind of cute, right? Just a little butterfly with his little antennas. And this is good like if you don't have something, you, you probably have the color so you can just make it yourself. And maybe this isn't the perfect one for this thing, but it's okay. I mean, we're not entering a contest or anything. All right, so let me get some adhesive. Plenty of adhesive. Here's some fast adhesives. What else I got? I'll use this one. And I'll just close this. To these, to close them, you just put two fingers here in the, in the bottom and you pull it towards you and then you close it like that. To open them, it's just as easy. Where the three dots are, you just push it and it'll kind of pop up and then you let it flip over and then you lock it into place. So the nice thing about that is that when you close it back up, it will lay itself upside down so that the stamp pad doesn't dry out. That's what's great about these Stampin' Up! products is because they don't, they don't dry out. I have some really old stamp pads and they last forever. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this together with my snail adhesive. I've got a little piece of paper on there. What is that? Okay. So I'll just put that right here. Oh, it's not even wet. That's great. And then I was thinking of just putting that there. I guess I could. And there's something else too. I was thinking of putting a sentiment on his shirt. Huh, I can't put Rad Dad because that's all pink. That's really not good. So what else can I put? Let's see. It says vintage. One in a million. Happy Stamper. Oh, Happy Stamper. That's cute. Birthday girl. Congrats. Love you. Um, let's do Happy Stamper. I think that's very appropriate. Happy Stamper. It's the Happy Stamper. She's happy because she gets to stamp even at 10.30 at night or whatever time it is. She can always stamp anytime she wants. Okay. I'm going to do this in black because it's going to show up a little bit better so I'll put these back over here oh, let me see how that looks the happy stamper yay happy stamper oops happy stamper didn't go all the way that time all right and I'll put it right up here the happy stamper Wow, looks nice. The Happy Stamper. I like that. And I think we probably need dimensionals. Doesn't that look good? Let's get some dimensionals. We'll put a bunch on here and make this little t-shirt stick up a little bit. Make it look cuter. 
So dimensionals are great because you get three or four of these sheets. I think it's three. And it's a total of 300 of these little pop-up adhesive dimensions. And it's great because all you have to do is use them and it just gives your project a little extra something. A little something something to make it look better. And in this case, well, in any time you use um, the dimensionals, it makes the object pop up a bit. So I probably should have put some ribbon or something on here. Well, I still can. I can put something down here. And I'll think about that while I'm finishing this other card. But in the meantime, isn't that cute for just a simple little card? I think it's really cute. Not quite done. But it's cute. So next we're going to do this one kind of quickly because it is getting later. I'm going to do that, but I want it to have this piece as a background because I think it's cute and it's yellow so it'll match and it's got dots so it's kind of splattery. I like that. So I'm going to do this the same size. So I'm going to do it five inches by four. No, did I say four? Three and three quarters. That's better because then you get to see more of that daffodil delight. And this is a piece of one of our DSPs, the designer paper series. It is, I think it's called Fruit Basket, but I can't remember, I'll check. But that's really nice because when you have stuff like this, it's got two sides to it. Any of the designer paper, it's great. So this side had all the peaches and this side had like a, a different kind of color, which is just a pattern. So it's a, it's a nice thing to have, I like it. So I am gonna use this to get this adhered right here and then for this little t-shirt this is the one I was going to put I think I was going to put rad dad because I think even a dad wouldn't mind having a yellow t-shirt well it's yellow and orange it's not so bad and again this one I'm going to do in black because I think it's going to pop a little bit better so let's see how that looks very nice Tap, tap, twist. There we go. Tap, tap, twist. Okay. Put it right here in the center. Perfect. Love it. Okay, so he's going to go there. And I'm trying to think if I should put something else there. Hmm. Well, not really. No, not right now. I'm going to have to look and see what else I have. I know I have these, but, you know, it's not a girl thing, so I can't make it look really girly. Um, this might not go. What else is in here? I have these. These are kind of masculine, but it doesn't really go with this theme because this is for the nailed it design. So that won't go. And I'm sure not going to put the rhinestones. No way. All right, so we are going to mold that over, okay? But for now, we're not going to put these on there at this time. We're going to probably do it later. But for now, we're just going to do this. I'm probably going to end up, again, like with this one, putting a strip of something down here. I just have to find what I need. In the meantime, let me get some more dimensionals because those work so great. I'll put one on each sleeve. A couple at the bottom. One in the middle for good measure. And remember, anytime you're using the archival black, because that's what that black ink is, the archival black takes a little longer to dry. And the reason why is, I really don't know why. <laughs> I guess I'll have to find that out. The archival black just takes longer. I don't know if it's a thicker formula or it's for whatever reason, it just takes longer to dry. So just be careful you don't smudge it. And I've been lucky with this one because I probably in any other case would have smudged this by now. All right, so I'm gonna put this right about here. Push my little dimensionals down and avoid that stamp. And that looks cute, right? So here's the two little sweet cards we made. They're not quite finished because I really have to kind of think about what to put here. They just don't look quite done to me. But they're almost done and you kind of got an idea of how to do that you got to use the big shot and um i think you know this is a great little set so 
Uh, if you're looking for something you need for maybe Father's Day or some other holidays coming up, this would be a great one to get. It's called Custom Tea. You can get it in the bundle, which means that you can get it with the framelits to cut everything out. And you get a 10% discount if you get it as a bundle. So anyway, thank you for watching my video. And um, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like this video. Leave me a comment if you like, and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys. See you later.